everybody, how are you all doing today? You're watching P430. Let me introduce myself a little bit. My name is Philip Mantova and I'm a pastor from Indonesia. And as you know it, Indonesia is a tropical place all year long. But here I am today in Taiwan. It's winter here, so it's very cold to me. But I've deliberately chosen this nation to illustrate something very important to you because Taiwan has always been special in my heart. When I was six years old, I studied here. In fact, I came here because of a medical purpose to come and see a doctor. And I was very sickly. And I found myself one day walking down the street to school and halfway down, electricity from heaven just hit my body and I got healed instantly. So this is a land of miracle to me. And from the year 2006 to 11, God used me here to preach the gospel and I've seen so many miracles in people's lives. God loves people, you know, and He loves you. So today, I, do, I don't want to teach you uh, a theory, not merely words of men, but I'm going to share with you what I myself and many others have been through, namely God's miracles. So be prepared, because your lives are about to be changed for good. Before 30 minutes pass, I know your sicknesses will say goodbye to you and your sins will never call your home anymore. Yes, God is going to reveal to you some of the most important revelations from the scriptures. Prayer secrets are coming your way. Please don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Something good is about to happen. Sungguh hadiratmu Tuhan yang membuat hati kami damai. Ketika kami mendengar namamu ditinggikan, namamu dinyanyikan, hati kami bersorak, memuliakan engkau
I'm ready to study the scriptures, how about you? I'm gonna peel the secrets of prayer layer by layer for your benefits. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Let's just say a simple prayer now. Dear Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, please assist us in understanding the scriptures and apply them in our lives. Please help us see the wonders that are found in your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now let's turn with me to Matthew 6, verse 5, about prayer. Jesus teaching on prayer. Prayer secrets. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. First of all, prayers are not meant to impress human beings, but to express our feelings and also our needs to God. We can always express ourselves, our whole entire being to the one who has created us, to the one who loves us. And we've been clearly warned by the scriptures never to pray like the hypocrites do, because if we did, our prayers would have failed from the start. That's what Jesus means by saying that when these people, these hypocrites pray on the street to, great, to gain the respect of men, they get the reward from men. We do not want our prayers to be rewarded by men, but to be rewarded by God Himself from above with His miracles. Next verse and next prayer secret. But when you pray, Jesus says, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. This verse teaches us to focus on the one who answers our prayers, none other but the Father God in heaven. When you are more aware of His presence than the presence of other people and their opinions, then your prayers would certainly get heard because your faith solely depends on Him. Because when you focus on Him, things happen. Even when you pray in the midst of a crowd of people praying at church, for instance, or at your house when there is a fellowship going on, well, it's good to feel strengthened by the presence of other people for we need the support of each other. But do cultivate that personal relationship between you and God that is found in the secret place in your life. And that type of faith, when you're alone with God, when your belief becomes strongest, it is called conviction. And conviction always gets you to where God wants you to go in life. And your prayers would definitely be on a different level when you are completely dependent on Him. Yes, it is good to feel strong, to feel strengthened, comforted, and encouraged when you come to church. But the real, the real battle actually happens after you leave church. When you carry that anointing in your spirit, when you go into your room or go into your everyday life feeling alone, you do remember even though you can feel lonely, you're never alone because the Father is with you. When you focus on Him, your prayers will really break through heaven. Verse 7 and 8, And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, Jesus says, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. If there is one thing that needs to be changed in the way you pray, then it is not your style or your choice of words, my friends, but how you believe. There are no such things called better words of prayer, since the Father in heaven isn't impressed with human words at all. He sees the heart. So instead of being overly too concerned with whether what you say in prayer sounds all right in His ears or not, use every energy you find in you to fight every last ounce of unbelief in your soul. Go for that greater and better faith instead of better words. And if you pray like this, I know your prayer gets heard. As long as your prayers are submitted in the one and only name Jesus, He's the only way to heaven, He's the only way to the Father. However you sound in prayer would sound fine with God because He loves you and He knows what you need even before you open your mouth. Ever since I've discovered this spiritual truth, this prayer secret, I no longer care whether my prayers sound poetic or not. 
whether they sound beautiful in my own ears or in others. I just focus on God and I do my own operation using the sword of the Holy Spirit, the Bible, the scriptures to get this cancer, so-called doubt and faithlessness out of my belief system. And I believe you should do the same. Now the next prayer secret is no secret to us all. This prayer is so familiar in our ears. It's been recited over and over again in churches all around the world. This is the Our Heavenly Father prayer. Let's just read the scripture now. Let's turn to verse 9. This then is how you should pray, says Jesus. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. The first sentence of Jesus' prayer is the most important one because it points to the one who hears all our prayers, to God, the Heavenly Father. Prayer is indeed a relationship. It is not a mantra. It is not even a method. It is a conversation with a living God. And when we pray, we engage the most powerful person in the whole entire universe. So when you pray today, do believe that God exists and that He rewards those who seek Him wholeheartedly. And to the next verse, your kingdom come, says Jesus. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is very important when you pray, you surrender completely to God's will. Firstly, to, to His reign. Ask Jesus to rule and reign over your life. That's the only way to go. But then, Jesus is not all about ruling. He's also about blessing because He's a good God. God comes with a lot of benefits in our lives. I remember, I recall a scripture that says, Blessed be the Lord, do not forget His goodness and all His benefits. He forgives our sins. He rescues our lives from the graves. He renews our youth like that of an eagle's. So I know when you surrender to Jesus, you could also claim all His promises. Do have the right motivation though. Do not try to manipulate God. Ask Him to reign in the first place. Ask Him to rule and say, not my will, but yours be done. And trust your life completely to Him for He has all the best intention for you. And He will make known in your hearts through His Holy Spirit, which promise today from Him that you could claim in your life. And claim it bravely. Claim it with all your heart. Use all your faith, do not doubt. Say to Him, let your kingdom come on earth, in my life, on my body, that healing. You, you, I know it's according to your will. You want me well. Let that healing come upon me as it is in heaven where there is no sickness. Let that freedom from sin. I know that is God's perfect will for us to rid our lives of sin once and for all. Lord, I can break free from my addictions. Come unto me, that spirit of freedom, that freedom completely. When the Bible says the Son of Man, when He sets you free, you are free indeed. I claim that promise over my addiction to alcohol, over to my addiction to nicotine, to, to cigarettes, to drugs, to pornography. I claim this promise. This is power in my soul. This is power in my body. Let it be on me as it is in heaven. And when you say that with all your heart, He will release all His power to you. Verse 12 and 13. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. These two verses have taught us to be careful and to watch, to watch out for our hidden enemies. Verse 12 warns us of 
this inward enemy that's often found in us, that negative thinking, that spirit of bitterness. Jesus teaches us how to pray before the Father, how to be transparent before the all-knowing God, asking Him to evaluate us inside out, asking Him to, to shine upon our soul, to see if there is any crooked way, any crooked path for Him to straighten before our claims will be answered by heaven. So we have to open our soul to Him because He doesn't force Himself into us and ask Him to take away anything, any potential blockage and hindrance to your own prayers. And if He asks you, because He rules, remember, because He rules over your life, if He asks you to forgive somebody, even though you have not, no strength for it, then ask God for the grace to be able to forgive, to let go of somebody's wrong in your life. When you do that, you are actually lifting up that blockage, whatever has blocked your prayers to heaven, whatever has blocked heaven's answer to you as a result of your prayer, this blockage will be lifted away when you obey. And the, the next verse, verse 13 says, that do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the, all the evil one. This is an outside factor. This is pointing to the works of the demon spirits that are roaming around the earth right now, destroying homes and lives, destroying youth, destroying people who, are, who, are, who try to serve God, who are and discouraging the churches to believe in miracles anymore. And be careful of such spirits. In the name of Jesus, come against them with, with, a, with not only with a pure heart, but come with faith. Because Satan doesn't want to listen to you when you talk nicely to him. When you know there's a demonic attack over your body, there's a demonic attack into your house, then if you realize it in your soul, if you, even if you do not know the source, where all these attacks come from, it doesn't matter when at the moment you realize an attack is coming, the moment you realize your life is being invaded by a spiritual force that is not the Holy Spirit, then use the sword of the Spirit, the Bible. Use your faith and say, in the name of Jesus, get thee behind me, Satan. In the name of Jesus, I come against you, spirit of illnesses and sicknesses and diseases. In the name of Jesus, I come against you, spirit of addictions. I come against you, spirit of divorce in my family. I refuse, reject all these things in Jesus' name. And something will happen. Victory will kick in and a miracle will knock on your door. The last verse says, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Verse 15, But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. These last two verses seem to be just a repetition of verse 12, Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven the debts of others. But Jesus wants to emphasize again that our greatest enemy is often found on the inside. He's encouraging us to overcome our heart and He will do the rest. The, whatever is on the outside, it's easy to deal with because Jesus has already tamed and defeated the world. But on the inside, you got to make the right choice today, my friends. You got to make the choice to obey instead of to rebel, to follow instead of to forsake. Are you ready for a miracle today? Me. Come here, oh, sister. Sister, 10 years ago, she made an accident. So her vertebrae was crooked. Uh, and it, it presses on her nervous Now when we prayed for her, now she felt a warmth coming through her body. And after prayer, no more pain. I can see tears in your eyes. Those must be tears of joy, not sadness, right? Did you cry just now? 那, 你刚才有哭吗? 是, 
<laughs> 为什么哭？你感觉到什么 ？What do you feel？ 我感动到神很爱我。I know He loves you because now I see His yes. angels all around you in yeah. Jesus' name. Come here, come here. Come raise your hands, raise your hands. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, raise your hands. Receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Receive, 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 receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Jesus. 这个女生在六个月前，因为一次的意外，她走路是一拐一拐的。Now this young girl, six months ago, because of an accident, she was unable to walk properly after that. 那么医生检验过后呢，她的脊椎骨是 S 字形的。Now, now the, after the diagnosis, they found that her backbone is in an S shape. 刚才祷告之后，她感觉到有东西进入到她背部里面。Now, as we were praying for her, she felt that there was something entering her back. 现在她走路可以好像是正常人的样子。Now she was able to walk like a normal person. You know, I envy you. You know, I envy you. You can walk properly. I can. 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 So you will know that this mighty strength doesn't come from a human being. So you know that this mighty strength doesn't come from a human being. So you know that this mighty strength doesn't come from a human being. I'm just a jar of clay, just like each and every one of you is. Now, 我就像我们当中每一个人一样的，就非常平凡。Not even worthy to stand before the King of Kings. 根本呢都不配站在万王之王面前。I'm happy for you. 那我真的为你而开开心。Can you walk to me and go back to where you are right now? 请你走向我，然后走回到那边。太美了。Let's go back. 好，走回去。Are you feeling good? Yeah. You 感到很好吗 ？Come, come here again. Come here again. Come here again. 再再来，再来，再来。You walk like a model. 那你现在走起来会有点像模特儿。Let me be your grandpa. You have a date with me. Walking date now. 那现在让我成为你的啊祖父吧。Help me walk. 我们一起散步，散步。Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 赞美主。Look at me. 来看着我。Look at me. 看着我。And I stand, I stand in awe of you. Let's agree with me for a miracle today. As long as you believe with all your heart, a simple prayer will do. Just stretch your hands towards the screen in front of you as I pray for you. Father in heaven, I commit every one of our viewers today to you. I speak blessings, your blessings into their lives. Father, those who are sick right now. Touch them where they hurt the most. In Jesus' name, I speak your miracles into their lives. And those who are addicted, Lord, those who are addicted to alcohol, drugs, pornography, and all the other wrong stuff, in the name of Jesus, I speak freedom. And I set them free by faith in Jesus' name. And God has just shown me how these substances of addictions that once bound your life so much. They are being trashed by the Holy Spirit forever from your life. In the name of Jesus, as far as the east is from the west, God has brought you so much apart, so far apart from these things that once robbed your life. In Jesus' name, receive your freedom. From now on, you can never enjoy those things anymore because the anointing of the Holy Spirit has just been placed upon your lives and upon your bodies. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Every time I host this program, I have learned something new. God has shown me many beautiful things, even supernaturally, and God has just shown me that many of you are being set free. Congratulations! And even though you couldn't believe it, I know when you look back today, or someday, you look back to today that God has set you free today, and God has given you a new life. And until the next episode, I'll keep praying for you. Please keep watching our program because this program will change more lives in the days to come. God bless you.